Howdy, y'all. I heard you like teams where fucking everything is weak to fairy moves. Choice specs, tapu, ko, who? Are those words supposed to mean something to me? How about you go pick up a fucking football? This is a team where you use Quivel Dance Fellamosa to kill fairies for Komowo and Rarchomp. <clears throat> so I guess enjoy it for all three days that are left before Feramosa gets banned and then switch it for, like, Poison Jab Urshifu or some other stupid Pokemon that doesn't even have a fucking exoskeleton. Quick and dirty Dragon Fairy Steel Backbone. When you bring out Melmetal, people almost always switch into their Kanto Bird so you can punch it on the switch and then bring in Garchomp when they're roosting and then just fucking win. Skillshot Garchomp's the best Pokemon I've ever fucking used in my life. I guess you can also bring in como -O if you're confident that they don't have Hurricane, or you at least huff some paint first for the courage. Healing Wish Latias into Melmetal or Garchomp is fucking preposterous. Healing Wish kind of seems like the best move in the game. Thankfully Latias is so fucking ugly because then it's going to be easier for me to not just automatically put it on every team I make from now on. Clefable gives me a single button that I can press against other Pheromosas. Encore is something that I stole from a Ben Gay post, and it's incredible. Because people always try to set up with Magirna or Volcarona against you. And I learned that you probably don't want to click Trick with Latias if they have a Magirna. Because if you switch a Choice Scarf for an Assault Vest, it's actually way worse for you than it is for them. I actually can't wait to use Encore Clefable on a team where it doesn't also have to use Stealth Rock, because Encore plus Teleport sounds like the worst thing I could possibly do to another person, other than have a conversation with them for more than 15 seconds. Ready? Go! Garchomp is so good against this guy's team and nothing he has can really stop Latias from using Healing Wish later. So I am using about as much of my gamer brain right now as I would against Bug Keeper Bimmy on Route 1. The worst thing about Scale Shot isn't the 90% accuracy. It's actually that it puts a million fucking words on your screen and you don't get to look at Garchomp for a couple of seconds. I know that Volcarona is his most likely switch in to Como O, so I double out into the Latias, because tricking Choice Scarf onto any Pokemon on this guy's team is super beneficial, but especially the Volcarona, because otherwise it am become death. Like, I seriously need a baby genius to explain to me how Volcarona is not the best Pokemon in the tier right now. Although I think I might just be overrating it slightly for simply being able to beat Magirna. Which to me is like, an impossible art. It's like knowing how to make that kind of medieval stained glass that everyone just forgot to write down the instructions for. Melmetal is the least likely to just kill this team in one hit, so I'm fine with pivoting it into the Volcarona just to make sure that Latias doesn't get fucking buzzed. Since he locks himself into Flamethrower, I can take a double shotty back into my Lottie. Goes right through my body and you know I'm feeling fine. Shark, as you can see, this guy's team has too much shit on it. I'm seeking 100 damage on a Blissey for 3% equity in my YouTube channel. The Toxic does put a timer on me, so it's looking like this Shark Week is more like a Shark Weekend, but that's still more than enough time for Donnie Sharko to just fucking bury the two Pokemon left on this guy's team that stop Como O from setting up. Hey, thanks Garchomp for killing half of this guy's team for me. I guess I take back what I said in the Pokegoons Discord about Dragapult being the coolest pseudo legendary. I promise I'll never be trifling again. And before the Elo police come to lock me up for gamer crimes, let the record show that that burn on Flamethrower did not matter because the Venusaur was just going to kill itself with Life Orb on Melmetal anyway. Now, Raikou, you are just doing a super job. So how about you just keep it up? How about you just keep doing it? And while we're pouring our 40s out for Feramosa, we should probably go ahead and pour one out for Sun Teams too. 
because I'm sure this is also going to be the last one of those that I see for a minute, because thanks to the hard work and dedication of wretched creature Arctazolt, Sun is finally not as good as Hail. Do you believe in miracles, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, thanks, Kamoo, for winning this game for me. Maybe now you can afford the treatment for your horrible skin tags. Yeah! Ready? Go! Don't let this slime mold IQ turn one psychic fool you. I was trying to use my baby Bobby Fisher brain right here. I thought he would lead with either Nido King or Ferrothorn to stop me from leading Melmetal and just whooping him. And either way, I would click Trick because he would obviously switch out of the Nido King. I have no excuse for this day one encore though. I'm not even gonna pretend like that was part of the Sicilian defense, that was just me being terrible. I finally get the chance to Tanya Harding one piece of his defensive core with Trick. Mandibuzz is probably the thing I least want to give Choice Scarf to, but I still definitely just want to not have Choice Scarf on Latias because I'm definitely gonna need to defog against that Ferrothorn like one million times. Obviously I don't intend to just 6-0 this guy with Como right here, but when I clangor his souls right now, he has to basically sack either Clefable or Ferrothorn. And with either one of them gone, I should have enough setup opportunities against like everything else to just whoop him with Ferramosa. Ah! That's actually a very beneficial chastity belt for me, because this is kind of the most primo setup opportunity I could have asked for. Quick BT dubs, this is Rosalie Berry Ferramosa to take half damage from fairy moves. So I will let you be the arbiter of whether that makes these quiver dances cooler or less cool. And after the second quiver dance, this guy has to hit the kill switch on his computer. Because his mom walked into the room and she started asking questions about the sexy cockroach on his screen that was about to dom him. Hey, how do I become the next Poke aim? Is it by commenting 16 turn battles where only one thing dies? Ready? Go! I was really hoping that this guy would be greedy right here and just straight up earthquake me. Because Melmetal lives it from full and Healing Wish lets you get away with playing really badly. But as a joke, haha. Brief intermission while we both do some Zen gardening with our pivots and place our rocks. Yeah, those look pretty good. I go into Melmetal here instead of Latias, because obviously he's going to flip turn, and I'm more scared of him going into the Dragapult than going into Lando or Buzzwall or something. Hey, check out this legendary turn. I didn't crunch the numbers because I believe life is for the living, but I'm pretty sure that even if he had remembered to give it Sheer Force, that timid Earth Power still wouldn't have killed me. Although, granted, I guess more people are catching on to the fact that Modest Nido King is the fucking Reaper. So at this point, I think that that is Shift Gear Magirna, and that I'm going to need to be able to Healing Wish Melmetal to deal with it later. I should have known that it was Assault Vest Magirna to go with the Buzzwall Swamper core, but I get greedy. And getting the Assault Vest sucks, dude. It's like I tried to pickpocket this guy, but instead of a wallet, I just got a handful of dog shit. Not gonna lie, right here I was kind of banking on this guy thinking that Bulletproof blocked Flash Cannon, like I did before I consulted the Oracle and found out that we got Frog the Jammed and it doesn't actually have Cannon in its name in Japanese. It's cool that I missed this Focus Blast because it means that I'm using my miss now and I'm queuing it up to where the next one hits. That's a little pro strat for you. That really separates the wheat from the chaff on the ladder. When this guy goes back into the Swamper, Latias is my sleep fodder because it's by far the least useful thing I have left. And I leave it in on the turn I fall asleep because I only need a little bit more chip damage on the Swamper for it to just get whooped by Ferramosa or Garchomp. And if he goes into like Double Dance Landorus or something, I have insurance against that with Encore with Fable. The Choice Scarf Landorus makes me think, okay, this Dragapult has to be the win condition. So this Encore is because I lost to Dragon Dance Steel Wing Dragapult one time, and I still haven't emotionally recovered from it. If I had put on my Gunners and activated my Gamer Ultra Instinct, I would have Encored the Swampert into Yawn to make sure that he couldn't put the Garchomp to sleep also. Because honestly, 
Clefable counters the Buzzwall about as well awake as it does asleep because of the Rocky Helmet. I'm guessing that this is like Choice Scarf Dragapult and he didn't want to lock himself into a dragon move. But killing Garchomp with Landorus here is actually a pretty big bungle because when I see no priority moves, my hand goes immediately to the Quiver Dance. I'm using however many defense EVs make you always live a Choice Band Grassy Glide from full HP. So I don't know if that affected the roll from the Earthquake, but it wouldn't have mattered if I was doing the thing I should have been doing the whole time and just using Heavy Duty Boots instead of the Rosalie Berry. Rosalie Berry. <laughs> I'm gonna start pissing people off by saying all the berry names wrong. I should have been using Belly Drum Sub Salake Como O the whole time. Anyway, happy Krampus knocked. If you used a stall team this year, make sure to lock your windows or else I'm gonna come saw your butt cheeks 